How's it going everybody? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 7 in my programming Leap Motion with Java series. This is actually my second time recording this video. I sort of had it recorded earlier. I realized when I was almost done that the microphone on my head I didn't plug into my computer. So, yeah. Now for, uh, I guess the last tutorial, we'll start there. The last tutorial we went um, over how to get data from different tools detected by the motion sensor and uh, display some of that data. But I'm going to comment that out for this tutorial because I don't want to get our console all cluttered with a bunch of different strings. Okay. Now we're going to start going over gestures. I wasn't sure how I was going to structure the gestures tutorials. Originally I was thinking about doing them all in one tutorial, but I, looking over my notes, I realized that each gesture has a lot f for each of them. So I'm going to do each type of gesture individually so that one big tutorial wouldn't be too, too long. Now we're going to go back a little bit here. Think back to tutorial number two in this series. We uh, created, um, well not created, we took this controller uh, as a parameter from our on connect method. So this method is called every time that the leap motion is detected um, by the computer when it's connected to the computer. And um, the controller object that gets passed in, we then enabled gestures for it. Um, one being swipe, one being circle, and one being screen tap, one being key tap. If I took out one of these lines, then that gesture would not be recognized by the leap motion anymore. So we need these enable gesture um, calls to uh, allow the leap motion to detect them. First video, uh, well, this first gesture video, I'm actually skipping over swipe for now and going to the circle one. So we're going to start with our circle gesture. So down here, make a little bit of space. We are uh, going to go over um, getting a circle gesture, certain information we can get from it, um, including angles, including you know which direction is the circle going, clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's get started. We first have to get the list of gestures. A frame can have more than one gesture in it, and Leap Motion, part of their library, have a s object called a gesture list. And we're going to call this a gesture list gestures. And we are going to get it by calling the frame dot gestures um, method, which returns a list of gestures. All right, now we are going to do a for loop. And we're going to be putting code inside this for loop for each different type of gesture. So don't comment it out or delete it after this tutorial is over. So for i and t, i equals 0, as long as i is less than gestures dot count. So a gestures list has a count method that returns the number of gestures in that list. And we are going to increment it by 1 each time. Inside the for loop, we are going to create a gesture object. So gesture, we're going to call it gesture and we are going to get it from our gestures list by calling the get method and as the parameter i and for um, we're going to make a switch statement a case switch statement so each gesture has its, its own uh, subclass of the gesture class so gesture is the general for each every gesture that's detected um, but each gesture type has its own class so we're doing circle um, gesture detection and the uh, class for a circle gesture is the circle gesture class so for our switch statement which we are going to use to determine which type of gesture it is we're going to pass in as the parameter gesture.type, open close bracket, and then 
uh, bracket, sorry, not colon, bracket, is our first case, it will be type underscore circle, all capitals. Now, colon, and in here is the code that will be executed if the gesture is a drawing circle gesture. Now, I said we have to typecast this to um, the circle gesture class. So, circle gesture. And we're going to call it circle. And we're going to set it equal to new circle gesture. And we're going to pass as the parameter our original gesture object. Alright. So, remember this for every gesture that we detect we have to typecast it before we can um, get any data from that that type of gesture offers so circle gestures have certain type of data you can get from them uh, screen taps have different types of data so we have to typecast them to get access to that data now first thing I mentioned this we're gonna figure out if the drawing of the circle is clockwise or counterclockwise First, we're going to make a null string, and we're going to call it clockwise-ness. That's got to be a word. Um, and then, to determine which direction the circle is being drawn in, we're going to use an if statement. So if circle dot pointable dot direction dot angle to Bear with me, it's a little confusing, but we will get there. Inside angle 2, we're going to pass in the circle dot normal vector. And then we are going to uh, make our condition um, if the angle is less than or equal to math dot pi divided by 4. Okay? curly brace and inside here if this condition is met um, then the angle is less than 90 degrees which means that this uh, circle is being drawn clockwise oops for a colon or semicolon um, Otherwise, this circle is being drawn counterclockwise. So then we'll set clockwiseness equal to counterclockwise. All right, there we go. And then, next thing we're going to do is the swept angle. So the angle that you drew out with your hand during that gesture. So for that, we're going to create a double. I'm going to call it swept angle. And it's originally going to be set to zero. I will explain why in a minute. Now, I will tell you the if statement for this one is even more crazy than the one up here, but I will explain it all. Um, so the if statement for this one, uh, don't be alarmed. It is, well, I don't know how to say it's easy to understand, but it's not as hard as you think. Once I explain it, you should get it. So in here, we're going to put in circle dot state um, is less than or equal, or sorry, not equal to um, state dot state underscore start. And when I said the if statement is really confusing, I meant <laughs> everything inside the if statement inside the curly braces. Oh, and I forgot brackets here. Okay, there we go. Now, for this state, um, uh, dot state underscore start, think back to the tutorial too, we added in this gesture dot state uh, class. So what that is, it um, what we're saying here is if the circle is just starting, so you're just starting to draw this circle, then you haven't swept any out, like you just, you're just starting, you haven't swept out any angle yet, 
So the angle's just zero. You haven't swept anything out yet. That's all that means. Um, but now here's the confusing part. We have to create, to determine the swept angle, a new circle gesture object. So circle gesture, we'll call it previous. And we'll set that equal to a new circle gesture. And inside the brackets, we are going to pass in where it gets really confusing, controller dot frame. Inside the brackets, we're going to put a 1 dot gesture and then circle dot ID and finish that all off with a semicolon and now to calculate the swept angle we're going to put swept angle equals in brackets circle dot progress minus previous dot progress and then outside of that times two times math.py alright you are probably insanely confused I will try my best to explain it here so to figure out how far you've swept from your last gesture to this gesture so your know, swept angle first we're going to determine if it's starting well no you've already started this circle you've done it at least a couple gestures now so we are going to start by getting the previous gesture uh, and what we do there is we call the frame or controller dot frame and then we pass in one so what this is saying is get the last uh, gesture in the list or not the last gesture in the list but the gesture that occurred before the one we're currently working with now if we go up here to the top of this on frame method we just um, called controller dot frame we didn't put any number in there that's just saying get the most current frame which is the same as just saying frame dot zero. All right, and frame dot one is the one before that that occurred. Well, inside that frame, we're going to call the dot gesture method, which returns a list of gestures. But then we're going to pass in our circle gesture object and call the dot id method. Remember when we are we're working with hands and fingers. While it's held over the motion sensor, it's going to have the same ID. It's when it's removed and put back, it's going to have a different ID. But as long as it's over the sensor, it's going to have the same ID. So as long as it's continually detecting that we're drawing a circle, all those circle gestures are going to have the same ID. So we're saying go in this list of gestures and find the previous circle gesture with the same ID. And that's, <laughs> that's a lot, but that's how we get the previous circle gesture. Then to calculate swept angle, we're going to take the progress of our current circle and minus it by the uh, last circle gesture. And then to get it all as an angle, multiply it by 2, and then multiply it by math.py. That is a lot. Uh, I don't blame you if you don't understand it. Um, just accept it if you don't understand it. That That is right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to print out a lot of this data that we got for the uh, circle gestures. So system dot out dot print line and then in here first we're gonna print out the ID of the circle just so I can better show you that the circle gesture will have the same ID until we remove our hand from the leap motion and for that we're gonna call the circle dot ID method next thing will be the um, state of our circle. So for that, we are going to add state, which we can get by calling the circle dot state method. Next, we are going to add the progress of our circle. So progress and for that we are going to return 
circle dot progress which will return a float and then next thing is radius so the radius of our circle and for that we are going to call the circle dot radius method next we are going to um, <clears throat> get our swept angle which we will do from right. okay so angle <clears throat> and right now our angle our swept angle is in radians so we're going to convert that to degrees I just prefer degrees over radians and we'll pass in swept angle for that and then finally we are going to print out whether it is clockwise or not. Okay, and we'll pr we're not even gonna give that a title. Uh, what did I call that? Clockwiseness. All right. So that is a lot. Um, but let's run this just to see what we get. Actually, you know, ooh, before I forget, at the end of this case, we want a break. All right, now we're ready to run it. So run. Check to the motion sensor. I'm going to start drawing a circle with my hand. I'm going clockwise now. I'm going to switch to counterclockwise. There you go, counterclockwise. Back to clockwise. Now I'm going to stop this just to show you some of the data. All right. So here. Um, it had the... Uh, same circle ID for the most part. It's changing them from th yeah, it's changing them from between 301 and 302. I'm not sure what that's about. Normally, it's all the same number, but anyway, pretty close. It was just detecting different circle gestures, I guess. Um, it's in the update state, and no, we're not going to be able to see when it started. Oh, okay, here. Well, at least we can see the state dot stop, so it's going to return here. Um, zero angle, meaning it didn't progress any, you know, you stopped drawing your circle. Alright, and then for here we got a radius, so it's saying I had a 62 millimeter radius, so about 6.2 centimeters. Uh, I wasn't drawing an angle out here, but you can see here the angle I covered between uh, circle gestures that were detected, and it was clockwise. Let me see what we're at. We are still perfectly fine for time. Uh, what else did? Okay, the last thing uh, to explain is the progress. Don't think I mentioned it, but it's how many times your fingers have gone around the circle. I believe actually your fingertips specifically. So right here it's saying my fingertips in this um, 301 circle ID went around five. Point four times um, as compared to the last circle uh, progress where it went around 5.39 so that's all I want to talk about in this video guys I know it's getting a little long thank you guys for watching and sitting through all that especially the swept angle part um, leave a comment on the video like the video and subscribe I am also trying to start a new channel now called uh, Coding Basics Expanual. Sorry if I'm not saying that right, but it's basically a Spanish version of Coding Basics just to help more people out. If any of you speak Spanish and want to help out, I don't speak Spanish. So right now I'm trying to find someone else to help me with that. If any of you speak Spanish and are interested, just give me a message and we can talk and see about uh, uh, doing something together. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.